Hello, New Life family. Merry Christmas. I am bringing Insight Chapters, Isaiah 56 through 66. For those of you that have been following along, Isaiah, chapters of amazing prophetic words to give Israel insight, wisdom. Chapter 56 talks about salvation for others. For those of us that were not born Jewish, we should be rejoicing right now because it is talking about Jesus would come and Gentiles would even know him. I'm so grateful that God has thought about all of us. As we continue on in chapters 57 and beyond, God always talks about real things. I love it. He talks about how there is evil going on and he's going to judge those things. But he also says how much he loves the contrite heart and those who will be humble. We can learn from our Old Testament prophets to walk in humility, to stay contrite, to keep our heart right before the Lord. As we go into chapter 58, God tells us what kind of fasting pleases him. As we come into 21 days of fasting in this new year, my encouragement would be that we would read Isaiah 58 and learn from it and fast with the right heart and the right spirit. God is not asking us to starve ourselves. He's asking us to give up food, to fast, but make sure that we walk in love and kindness and treat people with that kind of charity and kindness. The Lord says, is this the kind of fast that I've called where you exploit your workers, where you strike each other? You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard. For those of you that were at Sunday service this morning, we talked about getting in alignment with God and building according to the pattern of his word. Well, he goes on to talk about the kind of fasting that he really likes. Verse five of chapter 58. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day to humble yourself? Is it not only for bowing one's head like a reed or for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Then he changes it up in verse six. Is this not the kind of fast I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide for the poor, the wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe, not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then he tells us, if we fast with that kind of heart and attitude and action, then your light will break forth. It's time the church's light breaks forth. But there is getting in alignment and doing it accurately. This seems to be what the Lord is trying to tell us right now. There's an action and an accuracy to living according to his word. And then we will see. Then your light will break forth. Your dawn will shine. Healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you. and The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. You will call on the Lord and he will answer you. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. Church, as we continue to move into a new year of fasting and prayer, I pray we look back at Isaiah 58, the kind of fasting the Lord loves to have. Uh, as we go into chapter 59, it's amazing to me how he follows it up with sin, confession, and redemption. The chapter is about us that would humble ourselves, cry out for our sin. We would repent, and then we would watch the redemption that Jesus has for us. As we move into chapter 60, he talks about the glory of the Lord. I want to read a few verses. It's so powerful. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over its peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, 
and kings of the brightness of their dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you, all you assembly and co who come to you, your sons who come from afar and your daughters are carried on their arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To the riches of the nations will come. And he goes on and talks about more blessing. Um, again, if you happen to be at church, if, if you weren't, go watch the service today. Uh, this is what I believe is coming. The prophets talk about terrible times and hard times and even hard times for Israel. But there's always a rise and shine. Darkness covers the earth, but the glory of the Lord covers all of us and we will arise and shine. And that's what I believe is happening this new year. A lot of crazy things are going to happen. But when we build accurately according to God's word, we're going to see the favor of the Lord. We're going to watch our sons and daughters come. We're going to watch uh, abundant blessing in the financial realm as well, because we're going to build his kingdom. And God's provision uh, is going to be supernatural. And he goes on just to talk about all the different blessings that come when we line up with him. Uh, chapter 61, most of us are familiar talking about the Lord's favor. I want to read a couple of verses. Um, Jesus prophesied in the synagogue that this was a fulfillment over his life and the same spirit that Jesus preached the gospel in, we preach the gospel in. Chapter 61, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom to the captives and release from darkness for those who are in prison. Proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness or despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, planted of the Lord for the display of his splendor. As we go through the rest of these chapters, God talks about Zion, the day of, of vengeance, prayer and praise. He continues to talk about judgment and salvation all through the prophets, but there's always an arise and a shine. There's always judgment and hope. As you get to chapter 66, he does talk about judgment, but he talks about hope. As we come into a new year, we have the hope of Jesus Christ. I lovingly challenge all of us to arise and shine for our light has come. For the spirit of the Lord has risen upon us. Jesus promised to give us the Holy Spirit and to live in it is phenomenal and wonderful for each one of us. This year, we're going to get into an alignment and we're going to build accurately according to his word. I pray God's favor as we come into a new year. As things continue to get shaken, we will not be shaken, but we will be stirred and moved to watch the glory of the Lord shine in the earth. I love you guys. Have a wonderful Christmas and New Year. God bless you guys, and we'll see you soon.